So I'll start with something that you're very familiar with here, and it's about uh, what happens. What is the audience behavior? When we talk of audience, if you want to project yourself as a brand in the internet, you're speaking to a certain group of people and there are some shared tendencies that uh, internet users have. Until uh, Sam was taken to court when his company went ADA, we see that people online started looking for the company in blue. At the same rate they're looking for his company, it's at the same rate also people are looking for him, which brings a phenomenon called second screen. So it's a question of the, that moment you're being interviewed about a financial topic on the popular television or radio, and then that triggers people to go and cite the question will be what do they see? So always ask yourself that particular question. That, and here I give an example where one of us in Angaza uh, party, uh, I went online and I did a quick search of their name. And you can see that the search engine has so many options here. They can chat, they can provide images, videos, and even a map about yourself or about the entity that is being searched. So it's always good to think ahead of the platform. What does the platform provide? Look how fantastic this is. In a quick summary here, we find that because these search engines are driven by artificial intelligence, they can quickly uh, summarize about yourself. They can quickly give that bio that many of us, more than half of us have not written about ourselves. Uh, the search engines through AI are able to summarize. So the question is, do you influence how much they can do that for yourself or do you just want them to write about yourself and present? In those milliseconds, how will you be presented? So it is also that important to reinforce that and also understand how the technology works because when you're creating your digital presence, it is on the platform that is driven by technology. So it's good to have a little basics of how that technology works and therefore you can influence that technology. Here we have a good example and all of us have. I wanted to highlight that I checked the LinkedIn pages of most of us and I realized that this last bit, which is called vanity URL, which is your last name. Most of us have not customized that. Please remember to go on your profile settings and see if you can customize for it to look as, as this, the way you want it your name and not have the default names. So I go deeper to some a bit of an, uh, statistics about uh, personal branding in the digital uh, era. What we find is that uh, stories when told well, they are 22 times more memorable than facts when facts are left to start by themselves. That is according to Harvard mm -hmm. Business Review. And you'll find that at the moment, 70% of the employers are using social profiles. You'll find when you're filling in the profile to be a board member or to be uh, to, for a candidacy, that is usually most of the times they ask for your LinkedIn profile. This is because social media profiles or network is being a lot to tell about your personality, what you think before even people meet you. And also you'll find that uh, most customers feel a bit frustrated if they come to a website and they find that information is not updated, it's not reflecting the true picture of who the person is. So the same case applies. It's people will feel frustrated. They go to that internet web and they don't find the true uh, details about yourself. And as you pro proceed, you'll find that also 93% of customers read online reviews before making a purchase decision. Just to reinforce the same message here about brands. You see there is a bit of similarity between brands and independent individuals. Decision making is being driven by someone's digital footprint. It's it's therefore raises a very important concern about how you project yourself. And lastly, you'll find that uh, most customers believe that authenticity is a key factor when deciding what brand they like. Remember yourself, you as a personal brand. So being authentic is also very critical again in reinforcing that particular decision. So moving fast forward, and I, uh, Nur, allow me to use you as an example here. In the ages we are living in, it's important for us to know 
embrace the facts about cybersecurity and how we get exposed as we interact with the internet. Nuru um, lost her line when it went through the, the cycle of expiry, being deleted by the telecom, and usually the telecom after some time, it reissues that to the market. A mobile phone number, you build your identity around that number. But remember, you do not have so much uh, control about that ownership. So it's always good to have uh, a fallback plan and to embrace these uh, uh, realities that as much as you build your brand around a certain platform, uh, ownership can always change. So always have a way to fall back. So here we see an example, Nuru using her alternative channel to amend or to address the reputation changes that you are being posted by her previous uh, mobile phone line. So it's always good to have that uh, in mind, uh, how you will address that. And also, if you are a senior executive, most of the times you don't have time to go generate content, update your LinkedIn, run your Twitter. Let your team be aware of the cybersecurity uh, best practices to do, because again, as a whole CEO or as um, an MD, you could have your account hijacked and taken away. And therefore, again, your personal reputation is at risk or even your entire uh, organization gets exposed. I think since the COVID came, it pushed a lot of uh, people to podcast, producing video, and you can see it's very simple right now. Anyone to do what a big a BBC, CNN can do by producing quality content. Simple setup: you just need a light, you need your laptop, and then you need a podcast, a, a, a wireless or detachable USB microphone uh, here that makes your sound very good. Simple setup, just need to watch a YouTube and you can do very little investment and you can produce fantastic content. Why? Because content in terms of generating leads, it can do three times generating of leads compared to traditional or offline outbound marketing at 62% less the cost. Fantastic. So you, you want to project yourself, your hustle, your other initiative that you do elsewhere, you can you find that content marketing can do so well. And content will be in multiple format. It can be text, video, visual. And 61% of, of consumers mm, making better purchase decisions after consuming some content, educative content. Those of you who have read a bit about marketing is that when someone is making a decision like a consumer, there are different stages of buying. What happens with content it just accelerates that. And then in B2B, you'll find that uh, the buyers want content from industry thought leaders. So it's about investment and you position yourself as a leader. It works very well. And I have really consumed a bit of content. For instance, Rina has produced fantastic content about money wise and I normally consume that and video made 82% of all content traffic last year. That's according to Cisco. So you see how that is now because you cannot be on all platforms you have and you have your day job. You have multiple channels to choose and decide what to put there. So you may have a, your bio. Most of you say they don't have your bio. You may decide to have your bio on Wikipedia. It's the most authoritative, independent platform of talking up for biographies. You can have an independent website about your name. It could be www.nurumogambi.com or .net or whatever you want. LinkedIn, fantastic for professionals, free of charge with very dynamic content styles that you can do there. YouTube. Fantastic, big, makes money if you want to make a little coin there. And also blogging, you can use Medium or any other. So I wanted to highlight that so you can choose whatever you're comfortable. Now, I have a teaser and in this teaser, uh, it's the, uh, what is uh, Imaging Tech. And I would like you to spot and just answer yourself between the first one with the white background and the spaghetti is on the right. One of the images is real, taken by a camera, and the other one is generated by AI. So related to content generation, that AI 
has a capability to generate content. And just to help you further, I have another one. We have the famous Nelson Madera, one on the left and another one on the right. One is true photo and another one is generated by artificial intelligence, what we are calling generative AI. You feed, you feed AI with the text. For instance, this is an example. I just went to an AI and asked image of Nelson Mandela speaking in a political rally. And I got this image. And at this particular point, I want to give a very quick example. So I'll exit presentation. I know we don't have time on our side. So I jumped on to Nuru's. Nuru, again, I'm going to use you. I jumped on to Nuru's LinkedIn page. I extracted some information here. And so I, and therefore I'm creating a prompt. So my name is Nuru Mugambi. Below all my achievements, assume you are a career coach. So this is me instructing a chatbot what to do. You, I have made them have misspelled. You have been tasked to write a biography about me. Can you write one that will compel the CEO of Bank of America to hire me as a board member? So I give it personality here. This is prompt engineering It's a basic requirement how to know how to instruct the AI. So I've given it a brief and a bit of content. So it will take us less than 10 minutes to be able to engage with a chatbot. So I'll come here. I'm using the freemium. You can see not paid for free for everyone. Anyone here can do that. And I'll paste that prompt there and I'll wait for it to generate for me a compelling uh, bio that I can submit. So I wanted to show the positive side of uh, the positive side of technology that we can all embrace and uh, produce content. And there was a question again about researching about content. Somebody was asking, how do I know which content to write about? And there is a, for instance, if you want to write about video, always research what audience wants, what is trading globally, and therefore then build the content around that. So you want to build content around video and I put a tag here finance and when I put a tag finance. Then I said, uh, let, give me the videos that have the highest views. For instance, then I was able to see the videos that highest views. You can see there's Bitcoin and you could look at all these channels. You could use a different channel here. For instance, I come here. I use Google trades, Google trades, trades. I'll share these links in a chart. Google trades looks at what happened. I talked of 8.5 billion um, uh, searches in a day. You can see finance, I put finance and banking worldwide. The last 90 days, what are people searching? You can see here the topics about red is banking, hot. You can see the zones so you can decide your geography. For instance, if I look at Kenya, I can see Kenya. So here I can see the topics related queries. What are people querying? All this about banking, home banking, and all that. So what happens is that there are free tools before you jump into writing content. You have free tools that you can use to make sure that the content you're writing is uh, relevant to the people you're addressing. And you can analyze other people's channel. I did not analyze Rina's channel there, but it's doing fantastic. So as I conclude, what you need to, to do is that you must balance some three components called axioms, what people believe, what you believe in yourself, and then actions. How do you behave? So there should be a very good balance and overlap between those two. And also lastly, assumptions, what people believe in you. People is now that audience. There is a, should be a good balance between what you believe, what they believe you believe in, and also what they believe you believe in versus how you behave. If you're able to strike that balance, I think then you're able to be authentic. You have a balanced life yourself. You're not straining yourself and all that. And consistently be seen, produce the result, be consistent, as that has been said, improve your con communication as you go and align with the intentions of the shareholders here and also co but maintain consistency all along in terms of your content format and also your calendar. So that is it. So